So these things are pretty fun to do. These uh, Q and A blogs, soliloquy blogs, and I've done them like weekly, but I think I want to do Q and A's monthly. Uh, and that'll just, you know, give y'all time to come up with some stuff that y'all might want to ask. I give y'all a lot of outlets to ask me questions, you know, um, whether it be the phones that open up during the live streams or, you know, these little blogs or whatever. So, uh, shouts out to y'all for engaging and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to do, uh, two Q and a blogs. Cause I got a gang of questions. Um, I got a lot of football questions, but then I got a lot of non football questions that I think were interesting. And, uh, of course y'all know, I like to do non football content a little more than football content, but we'll cross that road. Whenever we get there, we're going to drop the football stuff first. And um, then we're going to do the non-football soliloquy blog tomorrow. It'll be a part two situation. So, um, hey man, thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. So let's run, I, I hate when I clap. Uh, let's run this for the cardio. First up, we got, uh, why did I just point at y'all? Dan, the man, he's the very first one. Uh, and he wants to know about the water origin. Well, when I was, uh, doing live streams or like cowboy live stream, I do think I got the, the best post game show in all cowboy land. So when we, when we have regular season and then we get into the post game stuff, come to my live streams, I think I do it the best. My humble brag of pink my humble bragging opinion. Um, but you know, it came from this idea that everything is better after, you know, a cowboy W after the Cowboys win, everything is better. Um, you know, life is better. The next day of work is better after a cowboy W food tastes better. Skin is softer, you know, and of course water tastes better. So after we've won a game, I always started with a water pour because we've earned good water. And when I go to the phones, I'd be like, what y'all water tastes like? Water good, water tastes good after this Cowboy W and all that good stuff. So got a question here from, uh, that, little, that looks like drummer cam. He says, uh, how can Kellen Moore be more effective uh, with the run game? Okay, good question. Um, I think there's two things you gotta do to properly um, you know, run inside zone or just any zone run scheme or whatever. You got to deal with a gap, whatever, you know, whatever that is, it could be two people in a gap, a zero, uh, one tech in a gap, and you got to block the mic. That's two things that you got to do to run the ball effectively. You deal with those two things and block the mic linebacker. You have a better shot of having a successful run play. Y'all write that down. It will be on the test. I love to ask, ask you know, that question. Like what, what are two things you got to do to run the inside zone effectively? Um, so if we do that, we'll be fine as a run team. You know, we don't have to be super technical as a run team, you know, we could just do some of the basics and uh, we have the talent to pull it off. We ain't got the greatest offensive line on turf anymore, uh, but we do have a pretty good offensive line that can get the job done and the best running back, one of the best running backs, let me check myself, one of the best running backs in the league. So Kellen ain't got to do more to run the ball. It's just more so when to run the ball and executing the run game when we do it. Speaking of which, uh, Big Dog asks, uh, should this be, should this be Zeke's last year? And I like when the next comment kind of answered the question for me. Uh, uh, that's Brandon from Franklin football. He goes as Mooseville. So I'm gonna tell him that he needs to, uh, social media, his whole rebrand so that he's the same thing on everything. So when people see Mooseville, they'll know it's Brandon from Franklin football and that he's a YouTuber. He'll learn that one day, take note other young YouTubers or whatever. Um, but yes, Brandon from Brandon from Frankly Football answered the question really well. Like, why would this be Zeke's last year um, as a Cowboy? You know what I mean? Like, I think we're in a place to where we're trying to win a Super Bowl right now. We're not in super team building mode right now. Of course, you you build your team every year. You acquire players every year. But we need every able-bodied person to play for us so we could try to get this thing going and get this little run of ours started, you know? There's not a reason for us to be getting rid of people like, and this not even just a Zeke conversation. Like this is, this is based in that or whatever, but why are we trying to get rid of people when 
we're not trying to save money right now and we are trying to win a Super Bowl. Y'all hate Tyrone Crawford. To your soul, you hate Tyrone Crawford. And I don't have a problem with you hating Tyrone Crawford, but we can use him, right? And Tyrone may not be better than Demarcus Lawrence. Is he better than Alden Smith? You may think not. Cool. Is he better than Randy Gregory? You may think not. Is he better than Dorrance Armstrong? Is he better than Joe Jackson? That's what I'm saying. So you don't want to be in a situation where, just like last year, Tyrone wasn't around for us. You don't want to be in a situation where, um, oh, well, this guy gets hurt. We got to play Dorrance. We got to play Joe Jackson more than we want to. We don't want to be in that situation. You need as many able-bodied people as you can. You may want to push Anthony Brown off a bridge, but if one guy gets hurt, this thing gets real confusing real quick. And you need people. You need guys. So why try to get rid of them? It doesn't make sense. You may not like Connor Williams, but if something happened to your left guard, like if Connor loses the left guard spot and something happened to Connor McGovern or whoever the hell playing left guard, you need them. So... I'm not trying to get rid of any of my any of my depth guys. I'm damn sure not trying to get rid of any starters. I damn damn not sure, sure not trying to get rid of any starter that's like always been first in the league in rushing. And even when he was missing games in 2017, he was top 10 still. And <laughs> he was still like, what, six last year or something like that? No, nah, I'm not trying to just get rid of guys for the sake of getting rid of them. So, no, nah, this shouldn't be Zeke's last year. Uh, D Chavez says, how many draft picks can we get for Zach Martin? Just curious. Don't hit me. And, and that, that shows growth in my channel and my community because he knew after asking a question like that, I was going to be bound to scream. Uh, so shouts out to D Chavez, but, um, sure. I'm not trying to trade Zach Martin neither, but just to hypothetically answer your question, how many draft picks can we get from him? I think it's in a weird situation because I don't think teams really want to give up a whole bunch of draft capital for guards. I think they should because I think guards are, are just as important as any other player. And I think if you really hit on guard, um, then it's really good for your offensive line. Like it's hard to find offensive linemen in general, but it's really hard to find tackles. Um, so those guys really kind of go, but like how many really, really good guards are there? And if you look at the best offensive lines in, in the league, it's not the guys with the best tackles. It's the guys with the best guards that end up having, um, you know, that kind of, that kind of impact. It's just that guard as a whole is looked at as an inferior position when it shouldn't be. Um, you know, if you look at Quentin Nelson, just the addition of Quentin Nelson makes the Colts offensive line better, just like the addition of Zach Martin makes ours better, you know? Um, and, and honestly, the inside is most important because that's what a damn quarterback is. You know, you 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 hear me talk about uh, not giving up the inside. We talk about pass rushing or whatever, not giving up the inside. Well, the inside of everybody tackles, guards, and whichever way you want to pick inside for center or whatever, because the center has two insides. I'll explain that later if y'all ask me to. Um, but, like, the inside is important because that's where your quarterback is at. So you need studs in there to protect the inside of the inside. So Zach Martin is very important to me. And he's a very elite player. But I don't think he, I don't think being elite at guard will get you the draft picks you want back that will compensate for how important he is to your team. So long story short, just keep him. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute. So uh, next next question, Alex says, can our defense handle Jalen Hurts when Wentz goes down? Great question, Alex. Uh, Jay Moss says, who's your favorite player of all time? Interesting. Um, Larry Allen is my favorite anything. Offensive lineman player, offensive player of, of all time. I'm a huge Larry Allen fan. Um, he inspired me to want to play offensive line because I didn't want to play offensive line. Um, I was a big boy back then. And when you didn't have youth football to kind of really get uh, your foot into football, then you really know who the superstar positions are. But you may not be privy to what, you know, offensive line is or like the in-depths of it or whatnot. So 
Um, when I first started playing football, I wanted to play like linebacker or something. But that's just kind of what I what I wanted to be, like a D end or whatever. But uh, I was forced to play offensive line because I was a big boy. You know, I just wasn't big enough to. I mean, I was too big to play those other spots. But um, I eventually had to figure out what offensive line was, and you know, I asked and Larry Allen being a Cowboy fan and the Cowboy family, then Larry Allen was brought to my attention. I realized who Larry Allen was and how he got down. I get a little older. I do more research on Larry Allen. And Larry Allen is a damn gangster. The 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 kind of offensive line that smack you upside the helmet, you fall down and they create a rule saying you can't smack people upside the helmet no more. Larry is fantastic and he's my favorite. Uh, my man's junior wanted me to give a prediction on the season and the game, the games that we played this season or whatever. Um, I'm not the best guy to go to for that. Like, I know I give objective analysis on analysis things, but uh, I think the Cowboys going 19 and 0 player. So that's just my thoughts and opinion. You, you might not want to ask me uh, my Cowboys opinions about winning and losing games. I'm, I'm not a great source for that because uh, we're going to win all of them, in my opinion. In my mind, we're going to win all the games till we lose them. JV28 Cowboy had a long ass soliloquy uh, uh, situation. So I'm just going to leave it up there to just kind of show y'all what he said. But basically, uh, the uh, gist, he said, hold on, I need some water. Let me sip some water with you, player. Cheers. Mm -hmm. um, but who do you uh, think will be a surprise Pro Bowler this year? Offense and defense. I got Cheeto and Leo. In real life, I don't want too, too many Pro Bowlers on my team. I called the late night hype the other day. Shouts out to them. And I had this uh, this thought that I don't want too many Pro Bowlers because if you normally the guys that make that make Pro Bowls, they're really good by themselves, and that team might be a little trash because they're good by themselves. Like some Pro Bowlers are are good. Don't get me wrong there. Like I would like to have like a Pro Bowl like linebacker or something. But in my mind. If it's a situation like uh, like Shaq Barrett, right? Shaq Barrett led the league in sacks last year, but the Bucks defense didn't reflect that. Um, then it's not worth having to me. I would rather have a a balanced situation of production than to just have one Pro Bowler. Um, for example, like my wide receivers, right? I don't need Amari Cooper to go for 1,800 yards and 20 touchdowns. That'll be a Pro Bowl year. Sure, absolutely. Shots out to Amari Cooper. But in real life, I would rather Cooper have a thousand yards and Lamb have a thousand yards and Gallup have a thousand yards and Jason Witten got 500 falling down. So I know uh, that Blake Jarwin and his yak could possibly get me that. Now you probably can't get Pro Bowl status by a thousand yard for a touchdown season, but in application of what we trying to do as a team, we would much more rather this offense be a a well oiled machine opposed to a situation that, um, you know, where there's one player just kind of shining over everybody. You see what I mean? Uh, so, I mean, my offensive lineman can be pro bowlers. I'm cool with that. Uh, my running backs, sure, Zeke. I wouldn't mind Zeke being a pro bowler. I mean, I want Tony to get down too. I want Tony to get his too. But sure, I wouldn't mind Zeke getting a pro bowl. I don't want my receivers because I want those guys to be evenly distributed. Um, and, you know, like my linebackers, if my, you know, if my ends both want to get 19 sacks a piece and both get to the Pro Bowl, then sure, fine. Just that realistically, I don't think that's a thing. So, I don't know, a handful of guys. Like, surprise Pro Bowl guys. Um, Leo Collins and Cheeto, I'm with you, player. This next question is from uh, Berdarius. Damn. Uh, Verdarius, shouts out to you, player. He says, uh, do you think our defense is going to be more man than zone this year with a lot of blitzing? Probably. Um, you know, when you do a lot of blitzing, that's a lot of cover zero, uh, cover one looks. So, sure, unless they incorporate some kind of zone blitz situation, and then I'll have to do my Googles because I don't know too, too much about zone blitzing. I would have to get into some independent research to pull that off. But, um, sure, we would probably run a little more man if we're going to be blitzing more. Caleb says, can you spend a minute talking about special teams? I know my dude, Chris Jones, is about to sling the pigskin on a few fourth downs. Uh, sure, sure, that's interesting. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not a special teams kind of guy, so don't really feel into my opinion on this, but I think I can, I can sum up the basics for you. Uh, if we make field goals, if we kick the ball out the back of the end zone, we cover punts and cover... 
Uh, we shouldn't have to cover kicks because we're kicking the ball out the back of the end zone. If we just do simple things, it will be fine. Um, I have a film session on um, um, like a fossil trick play film session type of deal. Y'all can go check that out if you want to. It's on the channel. I might link it. Y'all know I'm lazy as hell. I might link it. Uh, but you could just type in Vash Lombardi Fossil. It'll pop up or whatever. But, um, you know, it shows what he's done with the Rams and their unit and, you know, how they threw the ball around. So, uh, sure, if Chris Jones can run and throw, then I can foresee strange things happen there. But I don't really need a whole bunch of trick plays with my special teams unit. I just kind of want us to keep the ball out the back of the end zone and make field goals. That's it. Uh, Shannon Sharp had a question. It's not the real Shannon Sharp. It's some dude with the Shannon Sharp name and profile pic. I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, he uh, he asked a question. He actually asked like nine questions, and I picked this one. <laughs> so, shouts out to him. He says, uh, Gallup or Cooper? Silly question, but who stays and who goes in two years? I don't think that's a very silly question. I think that's real life. Um, I think we're going to be in a situation where – I got two sides to this thing. I think we're going to be in a situation where we have to pick. And to be fair, if you team building and you win a Super Bowl in 2020, then it, it won't matter too much what you do in 21 or 22. Just draft another receiver and move on with your life. But um, I think people take Amari Cooper for granted. You know, I think he kind of, you know, had a little bad go at it in his 2000. 19 season, it was like, oh, well, he's a prima donna, he's a diva, everything has to be perfect. Well, I mean, if you got a coach that don't like you, then, you know, I don't expect these players to be perfect. I don't expect humans to be perfect, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, when you just meet a whole bunch of humans or whatever, you know, these guys aren't robots, they're real-life guys. And if Sanjay Lau is is whack, and I'm Amari Cooper, and I'm, I'm trying to explain to you stop routes don't work, but, you know, you and Jason still want to run them, then I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't help that I feel some kind of way about you not listening to your players. Then you take me off the field, then of course I'm going to feel some kind of way. Of course I'm a whatever, whatever. Um, not necessarily excusing Amari's behavior, but I'm just saying I understand, you know, player coach relations, shall I say. Some people never play football in their life and have no idea what player coach relations is, is really like. Um, sometimes you ain't gonna like your coaches. Sometimes it is what it is. Sometimes you got plantar fasciitis. But to say that, you know, Coop played through all that and he was still a thousand yard receiver last year. Um, I think everything is gonna kind of come together. And I think j just as fast as people love Cooper and just as fast as they hate him after they loved him, I think they'll be right back on loving Coop again. The problem with Amari Cooper and the idea of that, that, that y'all hitting me with, that you should let Amari Cooper go, you're saying that shit now because you got a bad taste in your mouth, like the last thing you experienced wasn't great about Cooper. But Amari Cooper, in my opinion, is an elite 25-year-old wide receiver. 25. Or he like 24 or something. He's one of those. He's 24 or 25, right? He'll be 25 at the end of the year. I don't know. But you just don't let those guys go. You know, Michael Gallup, who may be cheaper, possibly he may have a lower number, but he's not elite. You know, I'm not in the business to get cool players. I'm in the business to get the best guys I can, you know, uh, and you can fill out your roster with cool players after you're done getting your best guys. So in a perfect world, if you ask him Vach Lombardi, like I'm just trying to keep all three of them, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I think the salary cap will be in a cool place to wear. Gallup won't be as expensive as Cooper and Lamb would be expensive for a long time. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's kind of going to be the the uh, the framework that helps you out. If you re-sign Gallup, I don't I don't know if it's going to be a long term contract or not. But CD Lamb being cheap for five years will probably help you get another year or so out of him. So I'm trying to keep them dudes around, man. I'm trying to keep them around, even if it's a situation where in 2022 or just 20 whatever whatever. Um, you sign Gallup, Cooper's guaranteed money will be over, but whatever, just hold on to him because Lamb will be cheap. And then when Lamb's not cheap anymore, you could just franchise Cooper. Gallup will still be under his deal, and you could do it all over again. You know, It's a lot of gymnastics that you could pull off, but I'm not like these other guys that want to get rid of their best players. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Smicky says, uh, why couldn't we just have given Dak his $32 million a few years ago? 
and just moved on with our lives. Well, Smicky, this is a fantastic point, I understand, but a few years ago, Dak Prescott wasn't the dude that he is now. You know, Dak Prescott was a cool little quarterback. He was a winner. And to be fair, a few years ago, I don't think he was worth $32 million. I wouldn't, I, I, you know, I just wouldn't go there with him, you know. But the guy that Dak is right now, right now, you just pay Dak. Just, just, just pay him. Um, I was saying on, on the, uh, on the late night hype last night that I don't really have, uh, a structured argument to back up my opinion, but I think Dak is a top five quarterback in his league. I think he's like right around three or four. Like I said, that's how I feel. That's how I see it. And that's how I interpret it. Right. Y'all ain't got to listen to me. Listen to your own damn thoughts and opinions. You have a brain. You ain't got to listen to me, but I think Dak Prescott is a, is a is a top five quarterback in his league, and I just don't have the the everything to prove it just yet, right? Because a lot of this stuff is really based on casual fan opinion, right? Like if you want to call Deshaun Watson a, a top five quarterback, then I you can explain it somehow. But if I go down all the stats, Dak Prescott's better than him. If I go down the win category, Dak Prescott's better than him. You know what I mean? Um, even playoff wins, they're similar. You know, I, th there's just not a concrete, casual way to explain why Dak Prescott um, is better is better than these guys. Right? I can feel it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but people are just gonna hound me, and be like, "How, Vach? How? 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 How?" And I'll go down every stat and I'll tell you how. I'll tell you exactly how. Then we'll go to wins, and I'll tell you how. And you and you're and y'all are gonna be like, "Well, Vach, he doesn't win in the in the playoffs." I'm like, he's one and two in the playoffs, just like Deshaun Watson, better than Lamar Jackson's zero and two. You know what I mean? I just don't have a concrete way of explaining it yet. It's just that the only thing that's left for Dak to do is to just kind of show us, just show us, um, and everything else will just be everything. And I saved this question to the last one. Every damn body asked me. Um, you know, how does Pat Mahomes' deal affect Dak Prescott? And I, I don't think it does necessarily. Um, I think Pat is another guy that really gets into that. We're having a casual conversation and we can say this about Pat. I think that's a real life thing. Fans do get involved. Believe it or not, fans do get involved. Um, but I don't think, I think Pat's contract is going to be its own thing, you know? Like, it's not going to have nothing to do with Lamar when he gets paid or Deshaun or, or Dak Prescott, for that matter. I think Dak is more so going to go by the regular structure of, you know, quarterback contract negotiations, you know. Um, I don't think anybody's going to get Pat's number. But the only thing that can make this weird, and I'll sip some water on this one. If Dak Prescott wins the Super Bowl and the MVP next year, his ass been have done everything that Pat Mahomes has done. And that'll make it kind of weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And shouts out to Pat, man. I love Pat. And y'all are cowboy. Y'all are my cowboy viewership. But if y'all have been viewing me for a while in draft land, like, like bro, like it was me and like 20 people in my audience or whatever that was saying Pat Mahomes was quarterback number one and they blocked my video in all countries I'm gonna re-upload that bitch but um like I been knew Pat was gonna be great man just me looking at him right and I'll drop those videos just for cross reference because y'all like to call me a liar but I'm a big Pat Mahomes I'm it, it, I, I, it's, it's, as big as I can be a fan of a player that's not on my team I'm a fan of Pat Mahomes and he is better than Dak Prescott I'll give you that. He's a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. But you know, when it comes to these quarterback matters, a lot of that shit don't matter. It comes down to what's on paper and what you can prove in court and what you can apply. If Dak Prescott wins the Super Bowl and the MVP, and he has similar numbers like he did last year, where he was top five and everything, top one, two, three, and five and everything, go watch that video if you don't believe that. It's going to be hard for the Cowboys to look Dak Prescott and his agent in the eye and be like, hey, we can't give you Pat Mahomes numbers. <laughs> it's going to be weird for him. So, hey, man, I appreciate talking to y'all. This was a longer one, but that's what happens when we do Q&As, man. Y'all ask me questions, and I'll answer about 15 of them joints. You know what I mean? Um, Follow me on Twitter, V-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I. Shouts out to my merch people, my PayPal, Patreon, Cash App people. Y'all very much so appreciate it. Um, 
And uh, that's about it, man. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski and Peaky Whiskey. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the non-football version of this thing. All right? So uh, tune into that. Salute.